emerge from Pandasaurus Games. Like, like it's being published by Pandasaurus Games. You're not emerging from Pandasaurus Games. I'm coming out of Pandasaurus. No, you're, you, this is a game called Emerge and it's being done. Boy, I love the word emerge though, huh? Doesn't it just make everything sound fancier? Did you come out of the bathroom? No, I emerged from the bathroom. I have emerged from the bathroom. If everyone else would like to use it now. I love the color scheme of this game here. It's just like, I don't know. These are, the, they're nice. They're nice together. They work together well. Um, you almost, uh, you might even say these colors um, have emerged onto my eyes pleasantly. That doesn't really make sense at all, but I'm trying to squeeze the word emerge into this video. You know, it has come to my attention that some people think that I do voiceovers on these videos, and I would like you to know that this is all being done live. There are no planned jokes or anything like that. I don't even know what's gonna happen here. There's no voiceover. I'm doing this in real time. So look at all these. These are all these land pieces that are emerging from the ocean in the game Emerge. And now I have a bet with myself, how many times can I say emerge in this video? And a big old board. Look how long this board is. What? What? It's still unfolding. You don't even know when this board's gonna stop. You know, we could do a thing. Dun, 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 dun. Longest board in board games. Oh, and a bunch of other fun stuff too. <laughs> Dawn of Ulos. Ulos? Ulos. Is it Ulos or Ulos? <laughs> I don't know, but I know it's the beginning of it. Whatever it is, it's the beginning of it. Because that's what Dawn means. We're learning words with Grand's Game Rex. Uh, this is a really interesting game because it's like an area control game, but you're not actually doing the controlling. Instead, you are bidding and buying stock in which factions you think will actually control an area. And I just, you know, I'm all for games that are trying to do something different. You know what I mean? We all play a lot of games and there's a lot of games that are sort of yeah, re-implementations of what other games doing and and this feels like it's different you know look at all these tiles and then factions are going to be like i'm controlling the forest i'm controlling the grasslands i'm controlling the mountains you know they've got all the classic terrain types in here you know them you love them that's water i bet you already knew that you know and so yeah it's just and and there's some cool miniatures in it we'll find them eventually there's a lot of tiles we got to get through first all right in this unboxing we got there they are Look at these. So these are like the different factions and you know, you put them out and you're like, this is, this belongs to the weird squid people now. Ha ha. The squid people have taken over this faction. And then somebody else is like, no, this is big breasted troll faction. Okay. That's what we want this to control this. Okay. The big breasted trolls will rule forever. Houston, we have a board game. This is Mission Control Critical Orbit from Third World Studios. And you are in a spaceship. Did you get that from the cover art? I bet you probably got that. This game is in space and you are spaceship commanders trying to make sure that it doesn't break down and that you can complete your mission. You know, you're really Apollo 13ing this. Stuff has gone wrong, you gotta fix it. This game has all of the words in it. It is an asymmetric, real-time, cooperative, roll-and-write game. So, did you want everything in one game? Because this kind of has it. Uh, and the way it works is everybody has a different task. Uh, it is definitely played best with four players because then each person gets a single task. The mission commander is trying to put down polyomino tiles. This person's trying to cross off numbers based on dice results. This person's doing like a Sudoku type of thing, trying to, uh, and for everything you do well, you get benefits and benefits are going to help you. Hey, there's those little polyominoes. You're trying to connect wires. Did you know spaceships have a lot of wires? I bet you, I bet you did know that too. So, and here are, 
Here are pens that hopefully don't stop working after the first time you use them. Please work for a long time, pens. We'd love that. How can nobody figure out dry erase pen technology? Ooh, it's a race to the raft. Everybody's racing to the raft. What do you get if you get first place in this race to the raft? You get to not drown. You made it to the raft. You're not going to drown. Uh, I can guarantee you that a game with uh, adorable cats on the cover is not as dark as that joke I just made, okay? There is no death in this game. You are disoriented cats on an island trying to figure out how to get to the raft. And uh, you don't drown. You don't drown in this game, but that was a fun thing to say. We've got... Cards in bags. Ooh, I don't know what these... So I do know that this is a cooperative game where you are placing stuff down in a puzzly style sort of way and trying to accomplish missions. And you accomplish them because there are a bunch of different scenarios. Look, campaign book. So this is like a cooperative campaign. So you've got different puzzles to solve, different things to figure out in the game uh, and... You know, you're doing it with tiling, you're doing it with building pathways, you're doing it with being cats. Did you want to be a cat? This is the successor to Isle of Cats. So in Isle of Cats, you were squishing cats into boats. And in this game, you're like, hey, we don't need to be squished into boats. We're going to figure it out ourselves. We're going to make paths and figure it out ourselves. Because we're cats and we don't need you humans, all right? When you come home, we are mildly interested at best. We don't need you. Holotype! This is a game all about dinosaurs, but like friendly dinosaurs. You know, look at this guy. He's a nice fella. He's not like a Jurassic Park eat you up dinosaur. We got enough of those scary dinosaurs. Time to get some friendly dinosaurs in board games. Actually, it was like very obsessed with dinosaurs when I was a little kid. I learned how to say all the names. I knew all the pronunciations. One time in kindergarten, my teacher asked me how to pronounce this dinosaur name in front of the whole class. She wanted me to teach the class how to do it. And it's still the most proud I've ever been in my life. Okay, that was, I peaked when I was five. Uh, I, so yeah, this is a game all about, uh, you know, researching dinosaurs and stuff. And it's got cubes. If you wanted cubes in your dinosaur game, well, now you got it. Ooh, little researcher meeples. These are explorers and researchers. We got fun dice with dinosaur bones and academies and double dinosaur bones. And, you know, all the fossils and stuff. Do you want to be like a paleontologist? Well, it's a lot more boring than you think it is. It's a lot of digging in the dirt, okay? You know, you you see like archaeologist stuff and you feel like, ooh, I'm going to be Indiana Jones. And then you go, man, it's hot out here and I am not finding anything. Step right up and play Big Top. Come on over and check out Big Top. We've got all the best mechanisms inside. There's auctioning. There's bidding. There's other stuff that I don't know about because I haven't opened the box yet. This is a small box game with a big box strategy. This box is bigger than you think. There's more in this box than you would ever dreamed of. Okay, I'm probably going to stop this voice now because it gets pretty annoying after a little while. Do you agree? Leave it in the comments and I'll keep going until after the fact. All right, this is a auction game. I love auction games. Uh, every player gets their own little player screen right here, you know, so nobody knows what you are auctioning and bidding. This is, you can't tell what I'm bidding. This is a game for three to four players. That's it. If you have two players, you're out of luck, okay? If you've got five players, don't even think about trying to play this game. But if you like auction games, we'll all play, formerly BoardGameTables.com, is doing a lot of these really fun small box games. And there's, you know, cool art. Very creepy or very fun, depending on your perspective.